Hi, this is your host, Supnil Bharti, and welcome to TFR Insights. Today, our guest is Chris Patterson, Product Manager for GitHub Actions at GitHub. And today, we're going to talk about uh, how GitHub is approaching DevOps, and also uh, talk a bit about the recent DevOps and GitHub Actions uh, announcement that came out of uh, GitHub Universe. So Chris, first of all, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I want to know uh, a bit about you also. Can you talk about what is your focus uh, on at GitHub? What do you do there? So I am the lead product manager for GitHub Actions. Uh, I focus on sort of the end-to-end -end experience for Actions, our extensibility model, the workflow, the overall developer experience, um, and kind of the core platform. Um, I've got a couple other colleagues that I work with that focus on sort of other areas like our runner infrastructure, you know, those GitHub hosted runners that we offer uh, and things like that. I've been working um, on this sort of thing for about 15 years. So I've definitely got a lot of background in this kind of DevOps space. A lot of people already know what is GitHub Actions, but for a lot of newcomers, I want, you know, if you can take some time and explain what are GitHub Actions and what value they add to the workflow or pipeline of a developer. So GitHub Actions is, I mean, at its core, people use it very commonly for CI. However, when we built GitHub Actions, we really wanted to focus beyond the simple CI workflow and say, you know, there's a lot of other things with GitHub that you can automate. So people have issue triage they want to automate or, you know, comments on pull requests, obviously linting, scanning, security scanning, et cetera. And so GitHub Actions really is about providing developers of the platform to automate the things they do inside of GitHub and in some cases even outside of GitHub. Um, you know, like I said, just beyond the normal CI workflows, beyond CD, obviously those are important, but we have been very interested to see the, the imaginative uses of GitHub Actions simply because we opened it up to such a much, much broader set of events and capabilities. Can you give uh, us uh, some, some examples of how GitHub Action has been used by developers, not only individuals, but also enterprise customers? Yeah, so we see developers using it for a wide variety of things. Um, one of the really, really common cases that we have seen across the community outside of the CI workflow are these kind of issue triage bots. You know, previously some people might use Stalebot or kind of try to set up other infrastructure, but having the ability to directly in actions, look at issues as they come in or look at pull requests as they come in and make some automated decisions about, you know, is this pull request valid? Does it have all of the necessary uh, information we want? Uh, is it the first time somebody has opened a pull request? We might want to send them a special greeting or some additional information about how to contribute to this project. And a lot of that community management kind of thing and automating that has, has definitely been a big deal for a lot of our sort of larger open source projects. Um, within enterprises, uh, we've seen kind of the same thing, but also seen a lot of focus on those CI workflows. Um, the enterprise customers I've talked to, a lot of them are about getting uh, fewer tools, frankly, in their toolbox, or, or at least more tightly integrated, less different things to maintain. And the introduction of GitHub Actions has really allowed them to potentially retire some of their other infrastructure and bring those CI workflows closer to the developer and more directly integrated to where their developers are. Right. Um, and especially at the end of 2020, we started talking a lot about GitOps. Uh, can you also talk about you know how GitHub, GitHub Actions kind of help people leverage that as well? So at its core, GitOps is really just about having a consistent, repeatable process where the, the declaration of what you want to do is stored in some sort of version controlled system. Um, you may have seen there's sort of this GitOps working group that has been launched. I'm actually part of that, along with other people from other companies. Um, and at its core, GitHub Actions is a a config as code model, and it is stored in your Git repo. So as you declare, whether it's your CI or your other kinds of workflows you want to do, they are they are very much built into that model. There are extensions to GitOps around how infrastructure might be deployed and the idea of reconciliation and other stuff. We're working very closely with the community on how we want to further extend actions into that model and figure out whether it fits directly with Flux or, or some sort of other kind of GitOps operator in the future, we're going to figure out for sure. Uh, but we definitely think that the core principle uh, is very well represented there. At the end of December, you also made a lot of announcements uh, <clears throat> that came out of GitHub Universe. So can you talk about some of the highlights there? So our focus at GitHub Universe for Actions was really helping 
customers build those continuous delivery workflows. And one of the things that we had seen uh, from the community is, is a very strong ask is say, basically say, look, we can build and we can deploy with GitHub Actions, but you know, there's things that are missing. And one of the common things that was missing was the ability to have some sort of approval uh, happen before you say deploy to production. And so as I looked at that problem, we actually built several different features that come together to help you build those secure continuous delivery pipelines. And so we took and built this core concept of environments and deployment history in there, which anybody can use for free. And what that gives you is just the basic idea that you can see a log of whatever your environment, let's call it production. I can see every time somebody deploys to production, I get that history. I can see which shot it was. I get a link to the exact workflow run that did that deployment, so I have that full auditability. And then building on top of that core concept of environments, we added the idea of environment protection rules and, and specifically required reviewers. And we use this terminology and this method because it lines very well with what people were already familiar with, with like branch protection. So people add required code reviewers for branch protection. And so we have now required deployment reviewers for deployments to environments. And so I can have this concept of two sets of eyes. I can say, look, the developer wrote the code and they deployed it to say staging, but before it can go to production, somebody else has to put a set of eyes on that or, or say it's okay. And then finally, we added environment secrets. And what that does is it lets you partition across those secrets for the, say, deployment of production, and those sit behind the protection rule. And so the workflow that wants to use the production secret has to be approved before it gets to run, before it gets access to that secret. And so using those things together, we've really enabled customers to build those much more compliant and secure continuous delivery pipelines. And we have a lot of plans on how to build on that base framework we created in the future. Once again, the CD is becoming you know, once again a very important topic, especially when it's come to security. You know, uh, security should not be an afterthought. You know, once you have deployed billions of, you know, there is no way you can. So it should be part there. What kind of trends do you see, especially this year in 2021, where companies are taking security very? Of course, we should not even talk about solar winds, though it's totally unrelated topic. But security is going to become a you know, very serious topic, and CD will play a very big, big role where you can start integrating while you're pushing things in the past. So can you talk about the trends that you're, you, you're, you're kind of looking forward to see this year? So I think that we're going to see, a, and we've obviously seen security continue to, to become more and more important. And uh, uh, some of the stuff we saw towards the end of last year uh, bring that up. You know, there was the, the particular vulnerability that somebody got onto somebody's CI server and injected malware into this network management product, right? So we all saw that particular story come across. One of the things that we are doing here at GitHub to help bring that is if you look at our advanced security product. And so we've got a lot of things we announced there. So we have the code scanning work we've done with the code QL language that lets you get deep analysis into potential security problems in your code. We've added secret scanning so you can look for our arbitrary secrets being checked in. And now we also have the dependency graph work that we're doing uh, that you'll start to see more of where we can actually look at your entire application and understand what dependencies you have and then use our security database to go find where those particular dependencies, whether they're NPM packages or NuGet packages or whatever, have security problems and highlight those before they make it to production. So back to this idea of protection rules, one of the ideas we have for the future there is to say, can we use this dependency graph that we know about your application and know all of the security details about that and automatically block deployments to production based on the fact that you have a high security vulnerability or something like that in one of your dependencies? And so continuing to look deeper into your code base, whether it's active scanning or even passive scanning uh, via dependencies is an area where I think GitHub is uniquely positioned uh, to do some, some very useful things to really help bring the state of the art and security forward. One more thing uh, that we are hearing is that SREs are going to, you know, become more and dev we will continue to see the evolution of the rules that, you know, or we can use the term DevOps or whatever you use. So um, do you see any, any further evolution there as well where SREs will be playing more role because as companies are trying to consume more and more open source code base, they pff, you have to be a master of almost everything, right? Uh, so, so talk about that. What kind of trend do you see in that space? So I, I think that the trend that we've seen and I think we'll continue to see is really the idea that 
the SRE becomes more of a developer and the core developer sort of becomes more of an SRE. And I don't think we will ever 100% see the complete merging of those roles because I do think there are some very specific disciplines that are different. And the ability to operate is, is different than the ability to develop. But I think that both of those two worlds have to continue to better understand what each other does and what the core needs are for those two different sides of the business and work more closely together. And platforms like GitHub definitely help that. We help that communication. And the more that we can keep things centered around the code, whether it's the operational side of the code or the development side of the code, I think we can continue to help uh, lighten the load to some degree. You know, the the expertise is a really interesting problem. And I do think that, um, like I said, some of the work that we're doing with code scanning and other things like that will help it help those teams not necessarily need quite such a deep expertise, but help bring the expertise of the community, frankly, to those teams that they can consume. I mean, when we look at GitHub, you know, it's a collaborative platform where we, we not only uh, put our own code out there, we also leverage from each other's code and also experience expertise. So can you also talk about how, you know, GitHub Action is kind of, you know, uh, continue to, to, to not only help uh, the members of the ecosystem, which includes individuals, enterprise developers, by not only sharing their code, but also their expertise and experience. Absolutely. So one of the core aspects of GitHub Actions is the reusable action that is part of the GitHub graph. You go reference a repository in your workflow, and that implements some core bit of functionality. And the great thing there is because these are open source and public, you can go take that expertise of, say, the Ruby community. So a great example is we've worked very closely with the Ruby community on the core CI workflow for a Ruby app. And they maintain that, and they maintain that starter workflow, and they maintain those actions. And so I, as a Ruby developer, don't have to go figure out CI for Ruby. The Ruby community did it for me. And I can extend that further via code analysis with GitHub Actions. So if you go set up code scanning in an open source repo, you know that is all powered by GitHub Actions. I can go see that. I can go, live, go view the queries, the code QL queries that are being used in there, and I can import those into my repository and gain that expertise. And I, and as you mentioned, you know, developers and SREs, because we're using so many different libraries and so many different platforms, gaining that expertise can be very hard. I think that GitHub has a great, has had, and will continue to have a great place in the community uh, on helping you expand that knowledge and, and just use the knowledge of the world, frankly. So the community aspect of, of GitHub is, you know, obviously been there for a very long time. And, you know, we continue to expand the ways in which the community can help each other. And if you look at GitHub Actions as a core, you know, the marketplace exists and it has more than 6,000 different actions in it. A lot of those come from the open source community, but they also come from our partners, whether it's Red Hat or IBM or, or Azure or AWS or Google. All of these different entities and the open source community are working together to help bring their collective expertise to you via GitHub Actions. Um, another core example from the community is the, the Ruby team, the, the maintainers of Ruby, have developed the core actions and workflow for running continuous integration for Ruby. And so I can go simply pick that up and use it in my project, and I don't have to gain that expertise. Um, taking that one level further, uh, the code analysis work that we do in as part of uh, the overall code uh, code scanning product uh, from GitHub is all powered by GitHub Actions. I can take and run those. I can go look at open source projects that are running them, and I can take, say, the advanced queries that somebody may have written and import those into my own code analysis and let me immediately gain from their expertise. And so this combination of the community and our enterprise partners, I think, really helps elevate uh, GitHub and GitHub Actions and make it just much more useful overall to helping you improve your own workflows and your, your own expertise. Chris, thanks for talking to me today about uh, GitHub Actions and, and how you are, you know, for, continue to enable community to, to, to share the code, share the expertise, share the experience. And I'd love to, to talk to you again soon. So once again, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it.